Hey there, welcome back. So let's work in tutorial seven. So if you download the cases, you should have these folders. So let's go in fluent case and I will open the base case. Okay, we're working in this one, but remember that you have geometries, everything, different meshes, so you, you, you can use different cases. So I already launched fluent and I will go case base. Okay, I have it here and fluent case, case base. So this is the main case that we're going to use. I want to point out here that you will find these files. So here you have the experimental data. So we know how to open in any case we're going to do it again. So this is the Flint format. And then we have these two files here. These are profiles, velocity, anti kinetic energy, dissipation, and omega fields to, to use it as in the condition. We're going to, to, to see how to open that, okay? So here we have the case. And as you go here, mesh, this is our mesh. So as you see, this is a, a nice mesh, fine mesh. So it's a wall resolving, or let's see, let's run. So let's see what Y plus value we have. But also see that in this line here that we have, we already saw that we're going to do the sampling already. Everything is pretty fine for you already. So remember that we have the vertical approach. So I'm just going to, to, to browse fast here because we know what, what is going on here. So general steady case, then in models for the moment, we just need to enable viscous models, the one that we're interested in determinants and the base case we're running K epsilon realizable enhanced wall treatment. So just let me say something about here. So you have the KX and you have the three formulations here, a standard RNG realizable. All of these are, let's say, different formulations or variants of the standard RNG and realizable that they have some improvement. So let's say that the realizable probably will be of all this evolution will be the best one, but all of them use wall functions. But remember that software developers or they, they can add new enhancements. So see that here you have the option for near near wall training. Okay. So if you put it like this, it will be pure wall functions. So you have to be careful. Remember that if you use wall functions in a wall resolving mesh, you are going to deteriorate the results. Okay. So this is contrary you now to, to the notion that we have you make you make the mesh finer, you get better results. No, in this case you're get, going to get worse results. So we're going to run the first enhanced wall treatment just to see the results and then we're going to run it like this just to show you that we have worse results. And then this these are corrections that later in for further tutorials Okay, different geometers, we're going to see what they're doing. But for the moment, they focus in this one. So nothing to do here, material, you set your materials, nothing to do here, the full options are okay. So here you set your boundary conditions, okay? So it's kind of boundary conditions, but I want to point out that in this case already, everything has been set up for you that we have the velocity profile here. So as you enter into inlet, see that here, we're reading this one. So by default, probably you have constant. We have done it using the constant. So if you use constant value, there will be a, uh, there will be a large difference. So we have these profiles. So you access here. So we have the X velocity profile. So the thing is that let me show you what, what, how to plot this profile. So as you go here in the bottom, after you read those profiles, here you have the profile data. Okay. So to read those profiles, you go into file read profile and just locate the profile. So for instance, we're running K accident. So the file R key, R K E is the, is the one that we need to read, read. If you are using the K Omega, you read this one. So if you select this one, okay, you read the file already, you have it in memory. So as you open this file, the text file also is a fluent format. So you can go into the documentation to see how to set up, but basically see that you give a header and then coordinates. Okay. So you can take experimental data, DNS data, some other data that you put there. So after you read that profile, you go here, profile data, and you can plot it. Okay. So see that you access the variable. So I want to plot vertical and you go here and this is your velocity profile and then turn and kinetic energy profiles and dissipation profiles. Okay, so this is much better than having a uniform profile. We're going to see that. So you read it and then you will access those profiles here. Okay, so most of the time you, you, you may have some 
uh, experimental data in English. So you, this is the way how you put it. Okay. So you have it there. Then you have the other external, the standard boundary conditions. So outlet, we're not setting anything. It's a pressure outlet, walls, everything is standard. Here we keep reading. Okay. So see the mesh interface, nothing to do. These are advanced auctions here. Reference values just to normalize. So I put this one. This is to normalize coefficients and tolerance intensity and so on. And then methods. Okay. So, so far we have mentioned that the default method proposed by Fluence. Okay. But it's the one you can use different options. You can do your own benchmarking. You will see that some will be faster, some will be slower. Okay. So it's up to you, but let's use the default option. So as you click here, Default, this is what is flowing proposal. So remember that momentum, second order of win. At least you need to have for final solution for action runs, at least second order accuracy. This is what we want. When it comes to turbulence, uh, first order it is acceptable, but it might be better to get second order or high get order. Okay, but for the moment, let's use third order. So controls, default values are okay. And if you're having problems uh, with the convergence, I uh, recommend you just to reduce these values and usually it will be the under relaxation related to the turbulent variables. Reports definition, remember to set up all your monitors. So see here that I'm setting many monitors. Okay. So it's up to you. Then you can review these monitors, but it's always set monitors. Okay. Here your residuals. So you set up your residuals. See that it changed this one to let it run for a longer time. Okay. Because this one would reach converging fast. Okay. So, or you can disable that some plops and that's all. Now let's go here. Let's initialize. So I want to initialize with the values from the internet, initialize, and we should be ready to go. So now you are here, leave default values here. Let's run, put here a value. Okay. So if you reach convergence, it will stop or will it stop when you, you reach the maximum number of iterations. See also that mentioned that even if this case is steady, you can compute a statistics. So if you are interested in getting a statistic, and usually this is helpful when you have some unsteadiness, not some shedding in your steady solution. So it's a good idea to do it. But in this case, I know that I don't have that, but you can enable, okay? There is not a problem. So you can put it there. So I will leave it on. And now I press calculate and see that all your monitors, everything. Okay. You have it here the viscosity ratio at the outlet, then the wall shear stress. Okay. So this should be the average value I have weighted in, at, in the wall, I think in the bottom wall and your Y plus. So I see that we reach rather very fast convergence, 97 iterations. And see here you have your residuals. This is a smooth solution. Good indication that we have converged. Y plus is that it's not oscillating anymore. So good indication. Wall shear stress also non oscillating. So remember that this one will be related to this or this to this. And the, the outlet, we have this, uh, this output. Okay. The uh, area weighted average of, uh, viscosity ratio that says that maybe it's still oscillating, but it's not that much oscillation. So probably you can measure that oscillation will be the RMS or you can compute standard deviation. It's up to you. But here, see that it's very smooth. So we can take this for granted. And now we go on C color. So as you go here, see that this is velocity. You are, you have access here to all the variables. Okay. So depending on what you want to see, but I want to point out that see that we enable the statistics. So you go here, a steady statistic and see that now you can access here mean velocity value. So this is the iterative. So I see that there is a difference with the, with the instantaneous and this one, see that we have a long initial transient. So we have some noise. So this is why it's not recommended to compute a statistic starting from the initial iterations. You need to, okay, the, the, discard this initial transit. So it might be better to start to compute that starting for 50. Okay, it's that the same applies with uh, on a steady solutions. Okay, but in any case, you have access to that one. So you have here the root mean square of these variables. This you can see as the fluctuation where you have largest fluctuation. As we said, we have it here. Okay, well you have the recirculation, but also where you have the shear layer. Remember that here you have the flow coming at shear layer and boundary layers. So you have access to all that information, and then we can look at the field. So see that here's where your 20 kinetic energy is kicking, where you have all your 
fluctuations, you can access dissipation, okay, so it should be like the wall where you are dissipating, okay, and so on, you have all fields. So let me put here velocity, okay, so see that we have this, and now we can do more, more post-processing. So it's here in X, Y, you can access in walls, uh, you can do plots in walls or, or, or surface, boundary surfaces. So here I already have a few predefined for you. So in the bottom wall, we can plot wall shear stress and precisely the X component. Okay. So see that the X component can take negative sign. It's not the magnitude that is always positive. So see that here, when you see negative means that you have separation and reattachment. Okay. So you have access to all the components there. Then we have bottom wall. Okay. Well, pretty much I think, yeah, that one's the same plot three. Let's see what we have here. So the, this is the distance normal to the wall. Okay. In the line, we see here that we're sampling line nine, the line that we created. So you have here, you should have a surface, that line, and I put precisely that line in these coordinates. And here we have Y, the distance normal to the wall, and here the velocity. Okay, so normal to the wall, this is your velocity profile in that line. Okay, and this one again, line nine, and here we're plotting u plus again y plus okay so remember that these are custom fields these they are not computed by default influence so you need to create it so we're going to review how to create those so we'll see that we have our classical profile here okay and see that we have it there and let's change the scales probably okay or better let me load the solution data okay we have case months okay we should have validation data okay support files so see that in support files you have validation data and here you have loads the wall and let me load here for instance a spalding solution and see that you put it there and you have a, a nice agreement okay so see that here our y plus Okay, which we haven't seen, let me plot it here. So instead of plotting that one, let me plot here. Y plus or Y star should be similar. So these are your values that you have. So we have a Y star, something about eight or Y plus. Okay, so you have your values there. So this is when we plot here. See that the first cell center in the line where we're doing the plotting, we have it here. Okay, something about 10. Okay, let's put again the solution so we can put the laws better. So see here that you have, and see that we have a relative good agreement here. We have a rather narrow uh, overlap region, and then we have the defect, defect region now that we separate. Okay, so in this case, for instance, you want to resolve the viscous layer, this is just telling you that you need to, to have a finer mesh. Okay, so it's up to you that, that you can redo this, this solution. But what is interesting that we have this one, okay, we see that we, 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 we have something similar to what the theory said, uh, says. So we go here, we have the wall shear stresses, but we also have some experimental results. Okay, so so you go here, okay, you have this CF data and see that we compare and we have a very good agreement. Okay. So the dots, the red dots that you see here corresponds to an experimental results. Okay. So you have the links there, the, the references and see there is a rather good agreement. Okay. There are some differences. Okay. There might be improved using final meshes. It's up to you, but this is a, a very good, a very acceptable solution. Okay. So just to remind you again, let me replot the mesh. Okay, here. See that the velocity profile profile we were plotting that here. Okay, you see this white line there is where we were plotting. Okay, so this is what you do. Okay, so remember to do those plots, you need to compute wall shear stress. Then you sample in this line needs to be normal to the wall. In this case, it's straight wall. So there is no problem, but if you have curvature, you have the geometry, so you know how to, to generate this line. And then you sample in this line the velocity, okay? Velocity and compute Y plus in this line. So just to review how to compute those quantities, the Y plus and um, 
the y plus normal and, and u plus remember that those quantities they are not computing by default by the solver so th those are derived quantities so as you go here parameters are customization see that you have custom field values and i already created here different field values so see that we have shear velocity okay you have it here so this is how you compute it or how i compute it so see that i created a sample so see that here and accessing this line so in this line i'm sampling the velocity the shear stress here okay so see shear stress in this point divided rho in this point in this case is constant you, you you don't need to do it but you just did it just to make it general a square root of that then you have u plus that is velocity magnitude divided shear velocity that we just computed and then you have y plus that you know your standard definition again see that i and i accessing for instance mu in this line here in this point but it is constant so it makes no sense so or it makes sense if you are a compressor that you can get your that value over here is not necessary and then here you have shear velocity okay that you just compute it and this distance this is the distance normal to the wall okay so remember that you can compute that in, in that is computed by default in fluent but you 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 don't want to use this one and you want to use your old values you 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 your you, your own value sorry uh what you need to do is that remember the point here that you start to 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 measure the distance this needs to be the coordinate zero so in this case it's not zero i recall that the zero is here so when you get that distance it will be y minus this one so you translate everything here and you start from zero here but well i think it's a good standard practice to use the boundary normal the boundary normal distance so see that you compute all your those that i feel Additionally, see that we have also integral lens scales. So remember from the theory, you can compute your integral lens scales using the k epsilon model. This is how you do it. So you use the k omega, it's different. And also you have the ratio. Okay, here the ratio, okay, the, the grid refinement ratio. This is a, a, an indication to see where you can add more cells. So be careful that that one is very conservative and usually you will use that one in the core of the flow. But here, see that here we are in the gradient of the wall. So probably it's not a good indication because you have a still the strong gradient. So it will tell you to, to have very fine meshes. So it requires some, 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 some critical analysis when you using that quantity. So, but let me go here, plot three and see that in plot four, sorry, custom fields, the one that you created here, now you access that data, okay? And that data you sample here, and you have your plot there, okay? Remember that this is logarithmic scales and you plot the other. So this is how, how we do it. And finally, just to finish the post-processing, let me go here and, okay, let me give me a minute that I have to answer the phone. Okay, so let's continue. So I was saying that this point, okay, you're plotting, let, let's plot the, okay, let me go here. Okay, so we have the velocity. Okay, and let's get, let me get access to this quantity. So remember that these are custom field functions. So as you go here, you see L0, you have the integral lens scales here. Okay, so this give, give you the idea of the largest vortices. Oh, this is computed for the computed from the terminus model. And then we have RL that is an indica indication, okay? I, that it will let you know is you need more cells just to capture better the those internal lens scale and we talk about that the minimum should be something about five but remember that is for scale resolving simulations no but here also this is a good indication no because usually when you go to scale resolving simulations you run what is known as a precursor simulation get an initial solution and usually it's a good idea to to have those values okay when you are in here so see that this is probably telling you that you need to kind of double your mesh but remember you need to look at the core okay this is indication at the core of the flow okay close to the walls there don't pay attention because that is you are here you are there in the velocity gradient 
okay, that is influenced for, for velocity gradient. So likely you will need to double your mesh to, to, to capture better there, but this is a rough indication, but it's better, like I say, better than the nothing or just going trial and error. So pretty much uh, we have address everything here so let me go back here we have all these plots your quantities and again uh here also in this custom fields i think we have access to also again y plus so see that we're computing y plus and you have access to that value and all the fields so you have access to u shear remember that u shear will be constant because we computed at one point so everything that you add you get access and to get access to here in mesh see that you have access to boundary normal distance okay so see that you have access to all those variables and many other quality metrics okay so it's very important also if you want to check stuff like face area things like, like that you have access to all those quality metrics that later you can you you will be we will use these quality metrics to do some other operations. So this is this case. So as you see, we got a, a good agreement now the starting point. But now let's rerun the case. But see that what we're going to do that changing from the enhanced wall treatment that is the recommended one, the one that will be kind of a insensitive for the low Reynolds treatment for the KXL model, and I recall want to recall that low Reynolds means the Reynolds normal to the wall, not your system Reynolds number. So see here that you have different treatments and invite you to read the documentation, press L and you will see. But generally speaking, let's say or some gay, uh, guidelines is that non-equilibrium wall functions is like this one, but you have corrections for uh, pressure gradient and so on. Scalable wall functions is the treatment when you where you find the intersection between the viscous and the log low, and then if you are below a value, you use this uh, formulation. If you are above a value, you use the other formulation. And then the standard wall functions. This is the one that you need to be uh, for. You need to have a y plus more than than 30. So we know that here we have a y plus something about 10 or 8. So let's run this this case and let's see what happens. Okay. So is the one you can restart from the last solution or you can initialize. I will restart from the last solution. Okay. So let's see what happens. So if I press calculate, see that usually always we have this ju jump and then all your quantities. Okay. So everything is being recomputed, but now we have the new approach so now that we have a solution okay you can plot again here and see that you have similar result but as you recall the the previous one this recirculation song was smaller the reattachment it was shorter so here we immediately see that there is a difference okay but also in the mixing layer there you have a difference so the best way to confirm that is just check the experimental results Okay, so we have here the wall shear stresses and go here and see that immediately you see that there is a difference. And if we plot the experimental, see what you have. So you can run, but see that in fact, we have worse results, okay? So this is very specific for this kind of model, the standard K, Exelon, and Realizable, and all these models, that as you get finer meshes, you are going to get worse results. And as you go to the standard, it will be the same, okay? The standard is the original formulation, remember, it is it's based in wall functions, but then it has been reformulated just also to solve uh, the, the boundary layer. So I switched to this one and I will expect also to have bad results. Okay. So it's now it's a check here. See that again, these are even worse results. Okay. So this one, you can see that different formulation will have improvements. Okay. But not necessarily realize that it would be the best one for all cases. So there are limitations. And again, this is the importance of reading the theory and knowing what each of these torrents models is doing. So now let me go to the scalable. So remember that the scalable, what, what, what it's doing and the best way to understand that, okay, will be if I go here and let me do this plot. Okay, so, and I will load here, load the wall and load this and this, okay, plot. So remember that you have this, okay, 
So this intersection here is something about 11 or 10.8, okay, 11.25. So that depends on the concept. But the scaling, what it's doing is that is the value computed of y plus is less than this intersection, use wall resolving, and if it is more, use the log low, okay? And by the way, see here that in this case, look at how different is this, okay? Telling you that the results that are not reliable, okay? So this is the wall functions approach. So actually it's over predicting drag. So now that we, we, we chose here, uh, let's move here. Let's go to scale level. Okay. So let's rerun and let's see what happens. So remember that now we're shifting that point and we're using another formulation depending on that value. We will expect to have better results probably. So let me go here. And if I go here that I have the validation data. See that we have, in fact, better results. They are not as good as the results with the scalable wall functions, but yes, they are much better results. And if I go here, okay, and let me plot now the other data. Okay, so in the files there, okay, I will put now this file and see that it's a little bit different, but it's much better than the previous one that it was all shifted below. Okay, so again, see that wall function, each of this treatment will have an influence in, in your solution. So as you go again here for the enhanced wall treatment, I have you have this non-equilibrium, okay, that probably you may have the impression that is the best one, okay, because you have the additional correction, but by no means that means that it, it will give you better results, okay? So let me put this one here and let's see what happens. Okay, sometimes they can they, they, they can be a little bit more unstable because they are adding these additional corrections that it might they might be detrimental for for your solution. But it seems that in this case it did a good job. Okay, go here, put here, and actually he didn't he didn't do a good job. So see that how bad. Is a solution very, very, very different. Okay, so let's, let's see if the problem is related to the formulation. So let me go to the real life, to the RNG using that, and let's see if the RNG get gets a better solution. So sometimes there are some of these wall treatments that might not be compatible with your formulation. So if we plot here, it seems okay, but. This is the judge there. Again, we didn't get any any big improvement. So now we go enhanced wall treatment is the one recommended. And if we click here, let's see what happens. And crossing fingers that this one will give the right results. Now, that we raise out the beginning that we have good results, but maybe as we have different solutions that will have a, an influence. So let's see. So see that now we have a much better solution. Okay, so I think at this point, play with this case, as you see, a lot to do. It's stick here, it's stick with the K epsilon and play with all these models. Here you have different options. And remember, always you have the help. So let me click, click here just to show. So is the, that is the best source of information for you. Okay, so when you open the help, okay, in this case, it went automatically there. Okay, the user guy, but also you go here and you have the theory guy and in the theory here, chapter four, and here you have all the turbulence models. Okay, so as you go here, for instance, you have all the models, what is happening and the wall treatments also. So you go here, should be ba -ba -bum. the wall treatments you should have then somewhere here. Okay, 417. And see here that you have what is happening and see that the non-equilibrium wall functions, okay, is let you know what is happening. But this was this case, it was clear that you saw that that non-equilibrium that is adding all those corrections, it is worse in this case. Uh, so here in, in the data that you download, you have here the geometry, okay? So if you want to redo, to do your own mesh, and here in meshes also you have a few other meshes, okay? So you have a structure and structure just to show you. So as you read here, you can go read there, read uh, case, okay? And 
I have here case mobs. Actually, these cases I already have the modification. So let me read the instructor course. Okay. So again, just a reminder. Also, you will find a, a directory called settings. Here you have the settings. Okay. So you need to to put these two files where you are reading the case or copying the case because here you have the setting and here you have the velocity profile. Remember that we're reading those profiles. So just to show you this mesh. So what we have in this mesh, see that now, okay, we're doing now here in this case, sampling here and sampling in, in the recirculation zone. So you know that here you're not go going to get a good matching with the theoretical solution, but see that this mesh is, is very coarse mesh. Okay. So here, Let's try to run because this is already set up. So this is a standard, okay, K excellent with wall functions. Okay, so yes, and let's see what we have. So I see that our Y plus is something about 80. Okay, so usually if you want to use Y plus, you should aim for values, something between 60 and 100. Okay, that will be the, the ideal one. But the upper limits depends on your global Reynolds number. So now we have a solution, everything fine. So let's see some colors. So see that immediately here, you see the influence of the cell type in your solution. But we want to look at the solution in here. So let me plot in the bottom wall, wall street stresses, and now we can read validation data and see what we have. Okay. So it says it is an acceptable agreement. There are some differences. Remember the whole function, the largest differences you have it here where you have you no know, the, the back step. Okay. But let's say that we have a good agreement and now let me go and use enhanced wall treatment with this one, this mesh, and likely this should give worse results. Okay, so now we have this and if I go here and open this, let's see what happened. Not big difference, there was here some change here that became worse, but still it's given, well, remember that the, 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 the enhanced treatment actually, yeah, it shouldn't be a, a big difference. In this case it was worse, but remember that this one is the one that it will be white plus and sensitive, you know? And the scale level also should give good results because it will find that it will find that point, the intersection point, and then it will choose a treatment. In our case, everything the Y plus is always above uh, that intersection point, so it will use log low. So it should give exactly the same results as the as the standard wall functions. Okay, so now I go here. Okay, and plot here. And we have this, okay. And uh, what I want to show you here now that see here that in the inlet in, in condition, we're using this, these profiles, okay. So this is very important because this will have a strong impact in your solution, okay. You have very realistic profiles. So see what happens we use now uniform value. So this is valid also with the previous mesh. Okay. So if you put that one in here, let, let me put this. Okay. So what we're doing now is that at the inlet, everything is uniform. Previously it was this developed profile. Okay. So what I did to get that one, you said what you do is that you get here the inlet and you get a, a longer section and you let run the, 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 the simulation in that straight section and you get the profile at the outlet and then you interpolate it here. Okay. So that is very, that is strongly recommended. Okay. Having fully developed profiles is more realistic. So let's run now using the uniform inlet. So we have our, our jump there and a fast convergence and now let's see colors okay so immediately we see some differences but the true will be here so now if i open this okay see that we have very large difference in all this region probably here the match is relatively good but see that all this region the difference is large and it's just due to the fact that that we are using different uh 
boundary conditions, the uniform values. Okay, so in this case, we have seen the influence of turbulence models, different wall functions, different meshes, and also inlet conditions. Okay, so again, I invite you to play for with this case, a very nice case. We have this validation data. Okay, and that's all. Thank you for your attention. See you next video. Bye.